We honor the land and the indigenous people on whose traditional territory the Church Center in Manhattan is located. With gratitude, we acknowledge the Muncie and Lenape people whose home this land was for thousands of years. We also acknowledge all those whose territories interconnect us, the indigenous peoples of every land that is home for those gathered today. As we make this land acknowledgement, we are mindful of the traumatic history of systemic racism and oppression in the history of this nation and in the church, a history we are only beginning to understand. We reaffirm our commitment to learning, growing, and finding new ways for meaningful mutual healing as we move forward together.
I greet you in the name of Christ. Grace and peace be with you. And also with you. Dear friends in Christ, we bring before you this pastor and bishop who has served among us faithfully. With gratitude in our hearts, we send him forth to be chief pastor and primate of this church. ¿Quién eres y por qué has venido? I am a servant and follower of Jesus Christ, and I come as one seeking the grace of God and the prayers of God's holy people as we embark on a new journey with our Lord and Savior. Te damos la bienvenida a este lugar. ¿Cómo llegas entre nosotros y con qué confianza? I come knowing nothing except Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. I come as a pilgrim to be in prayer with people of God in order to be strengthened for the journey ahead. John, Bishop in the Church of God, we have anticipated your arrival with great joy. In the name of Christ, we greet you. In the name of Christ, we greet you. With all my heart, I thank you for your welcome. I hope to serve among you in Christ's name and in the joy of the Spirit. May the peace of God be upon this gathering and all who witness from afar. Sean, during the 81st General Convention, you were elected by the House of Bishops to succeed me and to serve as the 28th Presiding Bishop and Primate of the Episcopal Church. Your election by the House of Bishops was confirmed by the House of Deputies, and you accepted your election in the presence of both houses. Do you now, in the presence of God and the Church, gathered now for worship here and in various places, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do, and with God's help, will strive to be a faithful shepherd and pastor among you. Dear friends in Christ, will you who witness this pledge do all in your power to support and uphold Sean in this ministry? We will. Siblings in Christ, as we begin this new season of witness and service, may our celebration recall us to the unity that is given in holy baptism and nurtured by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. May we rejoice in the many gifts for ministry enriching the life of our church and be strengthened in heart and mind and spirit to proclaim the good news of Christ and to manifest Christ's presence in the world. Amen. Amen. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, in this time of new beginnings to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and deed the good news of God in Christ? 
I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, Keep us in eternal life by God's grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Eternal God, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your son, anointed him, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, keep us who have been renewed by water and revived in your spirit, faithful to our calling and steadfast in our covenant. Give us inquiring and discerning hearts, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Sean, receive this pastoral staff, the symbol of your authority and ministry as chief pastor and primate 
of the Episcopal Church. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, sustain you as you carry it in his name. I receive this staff from you and give thanks to God for your faithful ministry and for all who have carried this responsibility before me. Amen. Gracious God, shower upon your servant Sean the grace and power you gave your apostles in proclaiming the good news of our redemption in Jesus. As an ambassador for Christ, guide him as he seeks to shepherd his church in a devotion to your mission in the world. Grant him every joy in serving your people and every coverage or conviction, convention for your work, for what is good and right and just for all. So bless his heartbeat and his outlook. So inspire his writing and his speaking. So direct his words and his ways that the glories of your reign of love and peace may be known throughout his na this nation and to the ends of the earth. This we pray in the name of your dear son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy God, we acknowledge with awe that you have blessed your servant, Sean, with all that he needs to be who you have called him to be. We pray that with humility and grace, he will claim the gifts you have given him and use them to your glory and honor. Grant him the leadership qualities of Moses, the judgment of Deborah, the wisdom of Solomon, the courage of Esther, the risk-taking of Peter, the hope of Martha, and the witness of Mary Magdalene. Help him to seek and do your will so that the world will know that he loves and follows Jesus. Embolden him to speak truth to power, to keep a servant's heart, and to work faithfully to cast a vision of peace and reconciliation for the Episcopal Church and your whole church here on earth. Pour out your spirit upon him, we pray, in the name of the one who calls and sends us today and every day. Amen. O oh, holy God, in Christ you make all things new. Today I devote myself to your service. Grant me wisdom and compassion, that I may be a faithful witness to your gospel and a pastor to your people. Fill my life with praise for your marvelous works that I may serve you with joy. Fill your church with the power of your spirit that our ministry together may bring healing to your world and glory to your name. Kindle in us the flame of holy charity and the power of faith that transforms the world. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now to the church online and the church in the room, greet our new presiding bishop and his family. <laughs>
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Masiti, Amen. Siyako to Misa. Masiti, Amen. Siyako to Misa. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Solomon Han Dequap, a reading from the wisdom of Solomon. Nui yua naipa, nui nangwa muakandun ge hina musa suandwe. Ge nui yua naipa, dibisi nanga suram buitu. Damen muyaguapuna goip. Kishango miapuna, kishan nahapuna. Suram bin na tsandun gatu geyakuhene. Susumam buitu, surinasu abeinu, uri mugu abina ke kasuangund, uri yengaku, nui yu enaipaha uri ribiji baiku, hini nana uri peransai undui, nui yu enaipa uri yengaku, uri mapunu inga, suri wiyu tango yungaka, nui yu enaipaha mbo eitu, Nui yu enaipa wiyu tsa uri rusu muingunka. Tsangu yunga kandun, tsangu na kandue. Ke hina na hawa duint. Nui yu enaipa oyo sa uri ba undu. Du e ya ikandu. Bu undegwap dukai nui nuenam. Mi atui. Nui yu enaipa degwapaya nangara na kandu. Tsangu uru ka yenga kanduit. Nui yue naipa bani da dibiji mbaiku oyo sa nui sunda hai kanduit. Dama nui naipa han dekwap, the word of the Lord.
A reading from the Revelation to John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, and the end. The word of the Lord. Santo Evangelio de nuestro Señor Jesucristo según San Juan. María, cuando llegó a donde estaba Jesús, Abel se arrolló a sus pies diciéndole, Señor, si hubieras estado aquí, no habrá muerto mi hermano. Jesús, entonces, al verla llorando y a los judíos que estaban acompañados, también llorando, se estremizó enteramente y se conmovió y dijo, ¿dónde los había puesto? Le dijeron, Señor, ven y ve. Jesús lloró. Dijeron entonces los judíos, mira, como lo amaba. Y algunos de ellos dijeron, ¿no podía este que abrió los ojos del ciego haber hecho también que Lázaro no muriera? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, Already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord.
So here we are <laughs> with Martha and Mary. We know them best perhaps from the passage in Luke where Martha is rushing around doing all the work and Mary is listening to Jesus and then Jesus is on Team Mary. <laughs> Here in John's Gospel, just a few verses before our reading begins, things are much more serious than that. Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha, the one Jesus loved, is dying. Jesus gets word that Lazarus is ill and that Martha and Mary want him to come, but he waits two days before he decides to show up. He knows the authorities in Bethany where Lazarus is are waiting to arrest him, and time is getting short. We're almost at the end of the story. Once Jesus is getting close to Bethany, Martha, true to form, runs out to meet Jesus. And I can only imagine Jesus being relieved and thinking, great, here comes Martha. She's the one who always does her homework. You know, I can slip in a good teaching in here. And he says to her, I am resurrection and I am life. He who believes in me will never die. He's in a hurry, but he gives one of the most powerful statements in all of scripture. One, that statement that we will all of us take to our graves. In this lesson, Jesus again reminds us that the kingdom is here, that it is near to us, right here, right now, among us. He is the resurrection, the future promise, and the life, the here and now. The not yet and the now, the life that we have right here and right now is among us. And Jesus can speak that word of life. And then they go to see Mary, and it's been four days since they lay Lazarus in the tomb. And she is weeping, and the people around her are weeping. And then the scripture says, Jesus wept. This time, instead of teaching, he commands, though, that the stone be rolled away. And at this point, it's not hard to be on Team Martha. Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days in the heat. You want to roll that stone away right then, at that time? Then the scene that has captivated poets and novelists and painters and icon writers for millennia emerges. Lazarus, in grave clothes, comes out of the tomb because even in death, he had access to the voice of life. Even in death, he had access to the voice of life because Jesus is the word the one who came from the beginning, the one who brought life into the world. And so Lazarus is dead, but he can hear life. He's dead, but he has access to life. And now we see what this is all about. All of the proclaiming and the teaching and the dying and the weeping, Lazarus is restored to life, but he's not restored to wholeness. I was like, Jesus didn't finish the job right then. Instead, Jesus says to the gathered community, which must have been standing around terrified and bewildered, you do it. You unbind him. You liberate him. You set him free. Friends, as we serve together over the next nine years, we will find ourselves again and again in this story. We will be the clueless disciples. I've got that mastered. <laughs> we will be Martha working so hard and so faithfully that we miss the point. We will be Mary overcome with grief and sometimes anger. We will be Jesus trying desperately to get people to understand. And I hope this doesn't happen often. But I'm afraid at times we might be the religious authorities plotting to do what we should do with this troublesome Jesus. Because if you stop and think, sometimes the problem in the church is just that we find Jesus inconvenient. Mm -hmm. 
But most of all, we will find ourselves, I believe, reflected in the crowd standing around Lazarus' tomb. Over and over again, we will stand together, sometimes afraid, sometimes bewildered, looking for life, hoping for wholeness in all things. And over and over, God will call us to finish the job, to wipe away the tears, to bear witness, to unbind the captives and set them free, to participate in the kingdom of God, to make it manifest in the world right here, right now. Now, this unbinding and liberating of ourselves and our structures and our hurting world will take all the resilience we can muster. It will require us to set aside our disbelief and our divisions, our attachments to the things of this world, and maybe our attachment to the, to the way we think things ought to function. But if we can be faithful in this work of unbinding, we will find that we can become the stewards that God needs us to be of our congregations and communities across our church. Because it is in these places, in the congregations, the institutions, and ministries we have all over this church, that's where ministry happens. Where people are gathered today to be a part of this investiture in those churches where you are sitting right now, in your parish halls, in your churches where you're watching this happen, that's where it's happening. That's where ministry is taking place. It's in these places where faithful Episcopalians gather day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, to worship God, to celebrate and mourn their sorrows, and to care for God's people. In fact, I believe that it is in our gathered communities across our church where we come closest to glimpsing the real power of the story of Lazarus. Every time we feed the hungry, care for the sick, clothe those who have nothing, welcome the stranger, we are reaching out for life in the face of death. We have access to life even when death is around us. Even when the nightmare of this world surrounds us, we have access to the life and to the dream of God. As we baptize and bury God's people, as we make disciples and proclaim the gospel, as we soothe the suffering and shield the joyous, we are unbinding our congregations and setting a hurting world free. This sort of unbinding, though, is nothing less than standing against the lies of the enemy. This is the enemy who would keep us small and lifeless and hopeless. This is the enemy that would have us saying, we can't do any better than we're doing. The enemy who would keep us bound and will keep us bound if we prize our own preferences, traditions, and comforts above the need to collaborate to share, to work creatively, to proclaim the gospel. The days are over, if they ever existed, that dioceses and congregations and institutions of our church can just go it alone and do it their own way. For we must acknowledge our mutual interdependence, our need to do ministry together, to share what we have, and to sustain one another. Especially now, in this badly hurting world, we need to become one church. We're not a collection of dioceses and institutions, a collection of ways of doing things. We are one church, one church in Jesus Christ. God has given us the ability to share our resources and talents and resources and invest on ministry happening on the ground. Ministry in which everyday faithful people, Christians all around the world, are building communities, advocating for justice, and saving lives. Your ministries and your communities where you are doing the work of unbinding, of liberating, of being the risen body of Christ in the world. This work, the work of proclaiming in word and deed that Jesus is resurrection and life, is the work to which God has called the Episcopal Church, now and always as one church, together. Friends, the kingdom of God is near, right here, right now.
Nana Sua Gainda, Ene O Yogohina Marin Gapakanda, Siki Sogobia Ba under, Descend Dugumba Naru Wint. Yesu Jidu, Shiren Jedanu E. Tien Fu Her Hall. 我们的 sowohl der Einheit als auch der Welt. من قلوب عميت بصائرها وأرواح فضة قليضة تأبى أن تبصر تأبى أن تبصر حاجة البشرية جمعاء. نجأبا أتسمؤت وخسر إخولات لهدات بتصرخ شلانو بخملة شلخم. Découragement face à la douleur et à la déception, du manque, de persévérance et de regard. Nsaknan odemewan mino ninjewan nibena je asna mod debue endamewan ma mino mizewe. Berührer unsere Augen, damit wir deinen Herrlichkeit in der ganzen Schöpfung sehen können. Toca nuestros oídos para que podamos escuchar en cada boca el hambre de la esperanza y la historia de la renovación. Sí. Sí. Touch our hearts that we may discern the mission to which you call us. Touch nos pieds afin que nous puissions porter ta bonne nouvelle dans notre entourage, nos communautés et partout dans le monde. Benico, Nemen Marengape, Nemen Moema, Asuyan, a Degici, Beman, Nemen and Denny Wap, Neme Suki under Marenden Adem Mitui, Nawinga Beitu. Touch our hands that we may each accomplish the work you give us to do. Amandla nekutazo makube nabo bonke abakonza ega meni lako 
quindawo, ezi zezodwa, ezi yingozi, nezingena kulipendula. Zai the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Thank you for the invitation to speak at this investiture of Bishop Sean as presiding bishop. On behalf of the Anglican Communion family around the world, congratulations, Bishop Sean. We first met in 2015. I was then serving as Bishop of the Diocese of Kajukeji in South Sudan, which had a companion link with the Diocese of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. You are then the Provisional Bishop of Bethlehem, in addition to your duties in Northwestern Pennsylvania. Bethlehem's support of our diocese was invaluable. Bishop Sean, you bring a wealth of experience and Christian wisdom to this new role. At a time when careful discernment and renewed confidence found it in the gospel as so much needed by all mainland churches and certainly by Anglican churches the world over. We are called to speak afresh about our faith in Jesus Christ, to share the hope, to share words of hope and challenge to the world and to forge new friendships and bonds, communion with other Christians and churches so that the world may believe. This is God's call for you at such a time, and I know you will approach it in prayer and humility. The Episcopal Church is one of the 42 autonomous provinces within the Anglican Communion family. You have played and continue to play an important role in the communion. It will be our honor at the Anglican Communion office to work alongside you. The Anglican Communion family is called to be one across our great differences of culture and sometimes of theology. I praise God that the Episcopal Church continues to cultivate strong links with other parts of the communion, which enable us to learn from each other and share experiences and resources, spiritual and material. Looking ahead, as we embrace needed reforms and make strategic adjustments, we dare not expect a less fruitful world, worldwide harvest of mission and evangelism. The fields, as ever, are ripe, and we are sent to proclaim the good news primarily to those who, are not, who have not yet heard. God is calling us again to go without fear and to listen to his call. And we pray for the mission of the church 
in the, world, in the whole world. We rely on God's providence with humility and gratitude. We are indebted, we are indebted to Bishop Michael Curry for his inspiring witness to God's calling of the church to love and his, in his, and his insistence that all Christians are evangelists. Thank you, Bishop Michael, for your ministry in this church and the Anglican communion. Let me conclude with these words of Moses spoken to Joshua when he was invested with a new role. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9. Bishop Sean, you are called to, for such a time as this. Be assured of our prayers for you in your ministry. Please come and visit us soon at the Anglican Communion Office and let us together seek, God, seek out the Lord's will in partnership with many others to the glory of God. A message from the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Sean Rowe, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church. Dear Bishop Sean, once again, congratulations on your election. It would have been my joy to be present at your investiture as the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church. But due to my busy schedule, I have sent the Reverend Canon Sami Wenaina, who is my advisor for the Anglican Communion Affairs, to bring my greetings and messages of goodwill. The church has placed a trust and a responsibility on your shoulders. You come to the office at a time when the United States of America is going to the polls which are likely to affect the nations of the world. It is also a time of continuing war between Russia and Ukraine, Israel and its neighbors, Palestine, Lebanon, and Iraq. The wars in Sudan, South Sudan, and Congo are raging on. These conflicts, coupled with economic and environmental challenges, have forced people out of their homes and are now experiencing, we are now experiencing unprecedented immigration of refugees to the West. In the Anglican Communion, we live with the reality of tensions and divisions due to issues of human sexuality the ordination of women, and the diversity of the Anglican identity. The church has always found herself in conflicting contexts, and she is called to respond with hope to the needs of humanity. I therefore encourage you to rise up to the occasion through the power of the Holy Spirit to lead the Episcopal Church in responding to its ministry context. I assure you of my prayers, and I hope to welcome you to the Lambeth Palace soon. Finally, the words of Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. In Christ, the most reverend and right honorable Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Good morning, saints. Good morning. 
My name is Miguelina Howell, a chaplain to the House of Bishops and Dean of the Cathedral in the Episcopal Church in Connecticut. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Father Ricardo Bailey, and I am the rector of the historic Calvary Episcopal Church in the Diocese of South Carolina, the city of Charleston, and I also serve as a chaplain for the House of Bishops. We're here to share with you instructions for communion. Vamos a tener dos estaciones de comunión en el centro. Va a haber hostias libres de gluten. Y por favor, sigan las instrucciones de los ujieres. Everything she said. <laughs> Holy communion will be given right here in front of the altar. We'll have two communion stations and gluten-free hosts will be available at those stations alongside both um, stations, you have a chalice. We will have communion coming from the front. And please follow the directions of the ushers who will begin from the back and lead you up to the front for Holy Communion. Thank you once again. The offering today will go to support Episcopal Migration Ministries. Please be generous, particularly now and in this time, and support one of our very important ministries as a church. But do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift hands to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are fitting members of the body of Christ and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, let us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Paz para amar y a servir al Señor. Go in peace to love and serve Jesus Christ our Savior. Thanks be to God.